All right, mud lovers, you join me and the ducks <laughs> down here on the Thames foreshore. We go mud larking, which means looking for anything old and interesting. I've got my detectors today, might do a bit of eyes only as well. Let's get some luck in the muck. So first of all, I like to have a little walk up and down, see what's occurring, and uh, I found my first little eyes only find. Come take a look at this. Yeah, can you see it? At first it looked like a top of a bottle. But in fact, it's a piece of glass indeed, but this is a very nice little penny lick. How cool is that? Not bad little first find. Seen better days, obviously. So this was a, an ice cream cup back in Victorian times and you'd have been given one scoop to lick and then return this back to the vendor you give it a quick wash out and then give it to the next person and these were quite uh, good at passing on various illnesses because I don't think they really took great care in cleaning them between each customer uh, but this one was obviously not returned so yeah quite a nice little find actually nice little decoration around the shaft area <laughs> yeah pretty cool I've just seen this, I thought it was a safe at first, but I just flipped it over and guess what it is? Oh, the link intercom. I thought it might be a, a London Underground one for a second because it's got the same font or similar. Uh, just a modern one from a car park. What's it doing down here? I don't know. Out. First signal is the good old little pistol shot. And the lead would have been used in a small pistol to shoot things. <laughs> I found quite, I usually find quite a few of these, so I won't film them all, but you get the idea. Nice. Oh, look, there we have a little fly button. Pretty cool. Let's see if we can get a name off that. Yeah, that one can go on the Thames Buttons website. Keep building up that database. Any mudlarkers out there that want to contribute, ping over any buttons you've got, just a photo to this email address and we'll make sure they get up there at some time or another when I've got a free moment. <laughs> there we go. Hey! Nice little ring. Oh, charming little design on there. Oh, it looks like it could be plated though. Not sure if there's a hallmark in there. Yeah, it feels quite light as well. Never mind. A ring's a ring. It's still pretty cool anyway. Nice one. Uh, cool little hagstone. Always like finding these. Got a little stone in there at the moment, but it turn into a nice little pendant. Well, there's something good in here. Uh, I'm just going to do it live so you can see together what it is. It sounds good. Oh, look, it's a little musket ball. Uh, a, bit, a bit bigger than the last one. It did sound really good though. It always does. Well, guys, can you see that? I've just got a signal, I flicked it over. It looks like it's a cat badge from where I'm standing. Go on, be complete. Oh, what? Oh my God. That's amazing. 
Oh, wow. I love it. I don't know what it is yet, but I love it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, uh, oh, I don't know, actually. South, South Africa. Wow. Oh, <laughs> almost did my usual trick of dropping it back. That's a beauty. Hey, <laughs> get in. Oh man, I'm, I'm really happy with that. I don't, I haven't found a cat badge in ages, but that's a stunner. Really happy with that. Woohoo! So when we think of cat badges and wars, we usually think of World War One and World War Two. But this is from the Boer War in South Africa. There were two Boer Wars, and this is from the second one, from 1899 to 1902, as seen here on the badge. It also has the words Rifle Brigade in the middle. This regiment were formed in 1800 to provide sharpshooters, scouts and skirmishers during war. They became an established regular regiment and were titled the 95th Regiment of Foot and were distinguished by their use of green uniforms in place of the traditional red coats, as well as being armed with Baker rifles. They later formed into the Royal Green Jackets. This cat badge could have seen action from the Battle of Colenso in 1899, the Battle of Val Grants in 1900, or the Siege of Ladysmith. As with all the items I find, imagine if this one could speak. I just had this up. Anybody know what this is? Strange little thing. It is a thing, it's not just a piece of junk. Um, <laughs> detectorists find this quite a lot. Um, but yeah, it's a weird little thing. I'll tell you a bit later on. Big old fat nine milli. I'll throw that back. Well, this looks like it might be a very encrusted little pen knife with a bone handle. See that? Now, I'm not gonna knock the crust off it now as I'm worried I'm gonna break it, but I'll take that home and I'll see if I can recover that somehow. Don't have like, much hope, but you never know. There could be a nice silver blade in there. Here's hoping, but it's probably not, but even if, even if it just turns out to be a reasonable little pocket knife, I'll um, have fun trying to clean that up a bit. So stick around for the clean up and we'll see how we get on with this. Could be a win or could be a fail, but you've got to try. Are you hooked on mudlarking videos as well? <laughs> well, one for all the petrol heads. Can you help me out? What have I found? So it looks like this might be in the steering wheel. I don't know, a bit small for that perhaps, but look, right in the middle, a little cap. Now, some of you probably gonna know instantly what that's from. D, I can't think what that would be from on my limited automotive knowledge. But it could not be. It could be something something different from a, from a, some sort of other, you know, it could be a, I don't know. It looks like it's, it does come off the center of a, um, a wheel or maybe a steering wheel. Anyway, the D for don't know. <laughs> And maybe you could help. If you know, comment below. But I'll try my best to find out anyway. But there we go. I'll tell you what, have a little guess now. Put the comments below and we'll find out later. Coin in the hole. There we go. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if it's modern. 10p. Damn you. Well, look at the gloop on that. This one looks a bit older. Should you be a penny? Ready made. <clears throat> Ready made pull right here. Ah, yes. Oh, that's coming up nicely. George VI or fifth? Fifth. Probably 1920s to 1930s. Let's have a quick look. Ah, oh, yeah, 1935. Nice little coin, that. That'll clean up nicely. Well, look, I've just dug half of it out. I don't know if you can see that. Time to play spot the find. How good are your eyes today? We'll zoom in and have a quick look. Here we go, look. Did you see the spoon? Let's 
give it a quick wash. That's a nice little spoon, that big old, well, say it's a dessert spoon. Sometimes they do have uh, maker's marks on, as in, uh, you know, personalised. Uh, this one hasn't, I don't think. Oh, actually, it's got a few suspicious looking notches there. Well, a bit later on, I discovered to my delight that the spoon did in fact have some lettering on. It was really faint, but read NTGB. So after a bit of research, I think that this spoon was the property of the North Thames Gas Board. It established in 1949 and dissolved in 1972 when it merged with good old British gas. Now, I'm guessing this spoon came from the canteen, based in their headquarters in Kensington. So there we go, always check your spoon handles. Transporter. That's what I am, transporting you back in time. Seriously though, what's that from, suitcase? Yeah, again. If you know, comment below. Transporter. Hmm. Interesting uh, way that it's been stamped out of this aluminium. Oh, I'll keep, keep that. Look good in a little uh, shadow box, perhaps. I like. The, I just like the graphics. I just like the typography. Neat. Well, that's great to see people doing some litter picking on the foreshore because this, this little bit here, this little basin, gets really, really populated with all sorts of unwanted litter bottles. It's absolutely uh, shocking, so great to see that. Can you see the disguised find? Again, another cool spot to find. How good are your eyes today? Now your eye might be drawn to that thing, and it's not, it's just a stone. It's just the left of that. There. Anybody spot that? Well done if you did. Nice old key look. It's pretty cool, I like that. Uh, again, I'm a bit worried about tapping it off right here. I need to, I think I'll do it at home properly. So stick around for the clean up and we'll have a look at these little finds that are all encrusted. Wait until their secrets unlocked. In this case, it's just a Victorian key, but nice little thing, probably, nice little skeleton key. Ah, spent 303. I actually found a tip for one earlier, so I could put the two together. Although that top's looking a bit rough. <laughs> Not sure on the age on that. LC, maybe Royal Laboratories, not sure on that. So we looked at this little thing earlier. Um, anybody have any guesses what it could be? It is actually the uh, mechanical part of a parasol. I don't know why this, we find so many of these, you know. it's. Uh, must have made thousands and thousands of them and uh, for some reason this is the only bit surviving I imagine the rest of it is probably wood and uh, part of the umbrella or parasol went through those little bits there not the most amazing find ever but still a little curio well talking of parasols so the thing we found earlier is actually look it's that part I think on the old parasols this is obviously a, a new umbrella I would take that and throw it in the bin but it's just so embedded in there but you get the idea that's where it's from and they're still getting chucked in the river to this day. Getting whisked out of people's hands in the autumn weather. Being launched in the Thames. Well, this could be another little knife handle. But it's so caked in mud. It looks like one. I can see a few telltale signs. Again, I'll take that home and, uh, and sort that out later. So if there's anything good, you'll see later on in the roundup. But it could be. That's a nice antler bone there. 
As you see that the tide's slowly coming in. Not long now. It's never long enough, is it? Well, tide's coming in, but the what I've just found. Beautiful little fossil. I don't find these very often, you know. So when they come up, I'm well chuffed. Little sea urchin now. Yeah, but that's lovely. It's got to be like a couple of million years old. A detail on that. Beautiful. Well, one thing I don't find much of um, is Neolithic, Paleolithic hand tools and such like. Uh, this possibly could be a scraper. Um, I'm gonna get my mate Sean to have a look over it and tell me if it is or not. But you can see there, there's like percussion marks where they would have struck it just there to create that 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 sort of mark. But that's like a side effect of uh, getting towards the core here and uh, getting this as a scraper. Now it could be a scraper for scraping um, hides, leather, you know, getting the fur off. Or it could have other uses, I don't know. It might not even be that, but um, I'll, uh, I'll let you know what Sean says. But if it is, it's pretty cool. So I'm here with a good <laughs> mate Sean, and he's gonna tell me all about this beautiful piece of flint that I found recently when I was out mudlarking, because he's the flint expert, and he knows what he's talking about. Well, let's have what, a little... What have we got? Let's have a little look. Yeah, so it's uh, it's definitely a struck a struck flint. You can see the bulk, this is the striking platform. So before this was all struck, this core was prepared. Oh, nice. So you've got the striking platform there, and then you've got bang and you've got the strike you've got the bulb of percussion which which runs down there but the strange thing with this flake is you've actually got two bulbs of percussion you've got one on both sides on opposite ends mm. which it means that this is a janus flake which means it's got two bulbs of percussion therefore it was struck from a core and then the piece that was taken off another flake was then removed off of that so you've got the original bulb plus you've got the bulb that was taken off from there so that's definitely signs of a struck flake and then along this edge here you've got some little you've got some little uh, indications of possible use and looking at that point there you've got a few little nibbles on there and a couple on there which is more likely use as being a boring tool some mm -hmm. sort of perforator mm. making holes in leather uh, you know it could have been a little cutter as well and they've, they've, they've just used it as a scraper cutter and borer so yeah. a bit of a multi-tool probably might be a nice little sharp edge there as well possible scraper usage um, but that's not completely uh what's the word i'm looking for completely convincing but it is definitely a few removals and so what age would that be do you think uh, I, I think it's probably early bronze age i'd say yeah. yeah so after the neolithic into the early bronze age where they were still napping flint still using it you know for the everyday but metal was about they even actually copied metal tools out of flint hmm. and actually you know to the point where knives and stuff like that and had seen it in in metal in bronze and copied it in flint Oh, there we yeah. go. Thank you very much for no that. No worries, mate. So it's like that's a, a, that's like a Bronze Age Swiss Army knife. Then. Yeah, that's a multi-tool, I'd, I'd say. Some sort of multi-tool. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a piercer, I'd say. Yeah, and, it does uh, feel quite tactile. In oh the yeah, hands, yeah, right. and and that, but yeah, that 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 backing is what I call backing. Sometimes on you get on a knife, okay. and it's not particularly pretty, mm. but they blunt off any edge. So like you say, so that you can use it, it fits in the hand nice, you know. Um, uh, and, and that they would do that blunt the back of a knife blunt the back of a scraper so quite yeah it's, a, it's definitely a, a flint tool excellent well, there we go fantastic little tool there first to me don't usually find these sort of things on the foreshore but now now i know what i'm looking for i'll keep keep a beady eye out for more of these now did the petrol heads among you work out what this badge was from well i think it's from the company daimler Founded in 1896, which manufactured cars in Coventry after taking over from two German car manufacturers. They made cars such as this beautiful red green goddess, this stunning gold zebra, and also trucks such as this Daimler CB type and this Daimler Transport used on the Western Front, and even a limousine from the Empress of Korea, and many, many more. I wonder which model car this came from. If you know, comment below. Well, my lovers, that's your lot. The tide's in, and time and tired wait for no man, not even me, unfortunately. So, there we go. Tide's almost at the wall. Let's go back home, clean some stuff up, and show you what we found. 
Well, sadly, the key didn't even make it home. It broke before I got a chance to uh, take the rust off, but I'll see now if I can tap a little bit more off and save what we've got there. Oh, look, no, nothing left. It just literally turns to dust. That's a shame. On to the next one. Well, next up is uh, one of these pen knives. I've done it a little bit through electrical assist just to uh, help on its way. I might use the uh, wire brush on this one. I'm just going to see if I can gently just tap a bit of the bigger stuff away. Oh, there we go. Yeah, nice. Just see there, a little bit of brass. All right, this seems to have worked better. Must be chunk there. I thought it was antler. I don't think it is. I mean, sometimes you do this on the foreshore, but um, other times it's easier to do it with a heavy hammer on a um, on a piece of concrete rather than two wobbly bricks or whatever on the foreshore. So. Pretty cool, it. Uh, knife number two. I've been soaking it in vinegar. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of quite on this one. You can definitely see the bone there. Um, that is going to be any steel left, but we'll, um, we'll have a little look and see anyway. Mm -hmm. That's a cute little knife. So there we go. That's enough for that. Um, I think I'll probably. Um, Take the wrist off with a file or something, just so I don't um, make it, you know, quite vulnerable. But I'm going to clear that the inside here. So I think I'll leave it like that. I'm not going to do any more. These ends might be silver, actually. I mean, that'd be quite nice. You can just see a bit of silver poking through. Definitely metal. Hoping it's not um, too rusted up. If I clean this through and there is um, enough there to put on a little blade, maybe I'll give that a go for a bit of fun. Yeah, nice, nice little pen knife. Let's take it on the uh, wheel and have a look on there. Actually, it looks like it might be tortoise shell now I'm looking at it. Probably just bone, but that's uh, still nice though. Very nice, in fact. Imagine the stories this could tell. So here are the two knives that have uh, cleaned up really well. They're fantastic. Um, still probably a bit still on that one, but yeah, I've reached a point now where I'm happy with it. And also this little cute one worked really well. And I want to put a blade in there, so uh, if I get time, I'll do both, but I just fancy doing this little one. Um, I've got a piece of metal here that I'm gonna try and make a blade out of. I think it's a piece of brass. You probably wouldn't normally make a blade out of brass, but this is just, just to make it quicker, because doing it out of steel would take quite a lot of time, plus I haven't got the right bit of steel to hand at the moment, so I just grab this from my scrap bucket, and now I'm going to make it into a little little blade. On the hottest day of the year, now I'm going to use a grinder. <laughs> yeah, Sony Scorchio. Whoops. <clears throat> well, I'm not sure where that piece of metal went, I think it flicked over into next door's garden. Legend says it's still orbiting the Earth.
so uh, I'm gonna have to do something else. Uh, this is all I could get at short notice. It's just a aluminium or aluminium little tent peg. It'll work perfectly. It's already got a little suggestion of a blade there, so I think if I just cut down there, make a nice blade for it, then yeah, it should fit well in there. Let's give it a go. I might hold on to it this time with the pliers as well, just to be sure. So I had a very special delivery yesterday and it's from my old mate Graham, aka Gander. He's on Instagram, it's 2439 Gander2439 and he makes these wonderful handmade trowels. They're actually fantastic. It's even got my name engraved on it. So I can't wait to get going with this. It's made with Indian mahogany and it even comes on a bouncy cord so I never lose it. So uh, I think Nick's got one as well. Let's go and compare trowels. <laughs> well look, uh, we are Trowel buddies! Trowel twins! Trowel twins! Have you Trowel's got. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> On guard! Mine is a little bit more aged, but wow, it's look. aged beautifully. It has. Yeah, it even gives you little wax as well, so you can uh, you can keep keep them in pristine condition. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's great. You've actually worn yours down as well. I know. <laughs> I've seen a lot of action. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. What a beautiful specimen of a trowel. Um, I won't be able to concentrate on mudlark because I'll be too busy looking at the trowel thing, but there we go. Let's hope it brings me lots of luck in the mud. Luck. Well, thanks for watching, mud lovers. And if you want to see me get more luck in the mud, then please click this thumbnail. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. That would really help me out. And I'll see you on the next mud adventure.